Hello, this is Targor. Welcome to my vision of World of Warcraft Class Plus. This video is a Twitch stream that was not edited, so it's going to look like a Twitch stream. The design direction of my vision of WoW Classic Plus is substantially different from that of retail WoW Circus Shadowlands. Any private servers, Nadella Plus internal WoW. This is partially because it's ain't fixed and vanilla WoW's many problems first. Flash on polish, what's already there second. And add new content third. This is part of a playlist of videos. Yeah, this is part of a playlist of videos. Check this video's description for a link to the playlist. The document displays my vision of Classic Plus, and the document's version number is 1.5.15. All versions of the document are based upon patch 1.12.2 of World of Warcraft, that is the one before the Burning Crusade pre-patch. If you just want to know about the general design direction of my vision of Classic Plus before you otherwise look into this, then watch the introductory video in this playlist or read the document yourself and look at the list of major features. The link to the document is on my channel's layout page. That and I do not have a team of people or however work with me to make an actual private server out of this. This is all pure design thus far, and it ain't done yet. Now then, the PvP reward changes. Rank 12 through 15 PvP titles, yes I'm at a rank 15, shall be the following. Rank 12, Alliance, Lieutenant Marshal. Alliance rank 13, Marshal. Alliance rank 14, Field Marshal. And Alliance rank 15, Grand Marshal. Horde rank 12, General. Horde rank 13, War Master. Horde rank 14, Warlord. And, and Horde rank 15, High Warlord. All epic non-mount PvP rewards from all battlegrounds will have their character level requirements and item levels lowered by two. Oh, by the way, in case you did not watch any other videos about this PvP stuff, know that there is going to be a new PvP ranking system, which will be covered in the section number 5.1 PvP, new PvP ranking system video. And there are many other changes to uh, how you K up for battlegrounds and shit like that in other videos. Anyway, moving on. All revered non bag Ultra Valley rewards will have to character level requirements and item levels lowered by two. The the Ultra the Ultra Valley Exalted Offhand frills will, will be re itemized when I get around to it, and an H damage one will be added to the game. Ultra Valley Exalted will also grant you a choice, additionally grant you a choice of item level sixty three epic amulets of indeterminate stats. Currently indeterminate stats. I'll get around to itemizing that later. By the way, I already have the itemization formula pretty much worked out, but. I you have to get around to actually doing all the itemization work, yeah, that's a whole fucking lot of shit to do. You have no idea. Well, actually, maybe you do have no idea, but fuck. It's a whole lot of shit. Anyway. Our occupation exalted will also grant in an item level 6 free epic hell that's part, that is newly a part of the Ultrac Ar Arafi Basin set of items, which will be itemized like the residency set of items that it's a part of. This will come with a four piece set bonus of some sort. Rune of the Duty and Perfection will be changed to, instead of having level 20 and 40 versions, have level 28, 38, and 48. And 58 versions. The Arathi base and Revere boots will no longer increase your movement speed when worn, but other, other sets will be increased accordingly. The insignia of the Alliance Slash Horde will no longer require a lifetime PvP rank of 2 or higher in order to wear it, though it will be required to buy it from the non Battleground PvP Quartermaster, and it may be purchased from any Battleground vendor if you're at least honored with that faction. At at least honored with that faction. This particular change is being made because some people will be unwilling to do raided battlegrounds, but it ought to still be easily able to get the essential PvP trinket that dispels crowd control from you. Once you reach a given PvP rank, you'll always be able to buy gear for that PvP rank. Exceptions to this include that you'll still need to have access to the optional spares back to buy races and higher gear, and you'll still need to have a non-negative PvP rank, more than that in a different video, to buy any rank-based gear at all. All rewards offered by PvP rank shall be as follows. Not the negative ones, of course. This just the ones above zero. Rank one, you get to bard. Rank two, you get your crowd control trinket, anti crowd control trinket. Rank three, you get your blue cloak. Rank four, blue neck. Rank five, blue racers. Rank six, access to optional barracks, a to bard, and an additional five percent discount on all goods and repairs from your faction's NPCs. Only applies to rank six and higher. Rank seven, you get blue weapon slash ammo. Blue shield slash offhand, blue class trinket, and set ring one item level 63, which they all these are all item level 63 blues. Rank eight, you get a blue chest armor, blue hat, blue shoulders, and blue belt, all item level 63 blues. Rank nine, you get blue boots, blue gloves, blue pants, and set ring two, all item level 63 blues. At rank 10, you get battle standard and access to a quest chain that lets you purchase epic weapons and ammo of item level 63. 
At rank 11, you get a Commander's Epic Mount, access to World Defense, and an additional 5% discount on all goods and repairs from your faction's NPCs. Discount and access to World Defense only apply at rank 11+. plus. By the way, in this Classic Plus, all items in the entire game will be squished down to item level 65, including new legendaries, and including, of course, Nax gear and, all, and gear from all the Air Force Man raids too. And 20 mans. There's only going to be one tier of raids, so this is actually all going to be raid equivalent stuff, and of course the legendaries will still be better than the epics. Moving on. At rank 12, you get epic weapons, epic shields slash offhand, epic cloaks, epic class trinket, and set ring number 1, idol level 65, all idol level 65. At rank 13, you get an epic hat, epic shoulders, epic gloves, epic braces, and an epic amulet, all idol level 65. At rank 14, you get an epic chest armor, epic pants, epic boots, epic set ring 2, and an epic belt, and a Zabard. They're all item level 65. Possibly excluded the Zabard. And at rank 15, you get access to a pseudo-legendary weapon quest, item level 71 epic item, that is. Losing the PvP rank on the quest, while on the quest, will prevent you from completing the quest, by the way. And an additional 5, you also get an additional 5% discount on all goods and repairs from your faction NPCs. Said discount only applies at rank 15. Some notes for these PvP rank rewards. A wide variety of items will exist for rank 3 and up where applicable. 3 and up, yeah. Expect heal items, damage items, tank items, and offensive, defensive, and general purpose variants of those items, as well as hyper offensive and hyper defensive variants where they're allowed to exist. More on those in the sweep and ionization changes and ionization methodology video. Actually, just sweep and ionization changes. That's, uh, if I recall correctly, session 3.0.5. Anyway. The set rings are two piece sets set that set with each other, making a blue set and an epic set separately. The blue set being both blue rings and the epic set being both epic rings. The rare and epic weapons will both include, among other things, wands and relics. Oh, and of course, for each of the rings, uh there's gonna be different kinds of rings for each class. Anyway. Rank 10 and 14 melee two angel weapons will be available in speeds of 2.1, 3.0, and 3.9. As well as a hunter pole over 3.2 speed. <laughs> Rank 10 and 14 one handed melee non daggers will be available in speeds of 1.5, 2.2, and 2.9. Hold on. Uh, that feels better. Rank 10 and 14 melee daggers will be available in speeds of 1.3, 1.6, and 1.9. Rank 10, 14, Rank 10 and 14 weapons will include buy not pick up ammo. Though, if I recall correctly, I already said that. Uh, ammo, ammo, slash, ammo. Now I can get rid of this from Dungeon Life Detects. Although the rank based melee and range weapons will not have crazy procs on them or however the hell, they'll be get, I mean, good weapon, they'll hit, be having good weapon speed, just comparable in power to having a crazy proc, or maybe I won't give them crazy procs on them. No, yeah. All my ionization work is not really set in stone just yet, but it is pretty close to uh, being able to be set in stone. You know, I could just delete this part. This is that. Hmm. I'm not so sure about this yet. Anyway, rank 10 and 14 bows and guns will be available at speeds of 1.6, 2.1, and 3.1. Design notice. Is this up to date? Ooh. I gotta check to see if that's up to date. Rank 10 and 14 crossbows will be available at speeds of 2.1 and 3.1. What I, what I mean by is this up to date is that I properly account for, uh, like, attack speed and chance and the. And the brutality enchant that gives you an attack speed penalty, but also gives you a lot of crit chance. Hmm. Yeah, I still gotta make sure that I got that part down correctly. As well as correctly accounting for the uh, aim shot for the aim shot rotations. Anyway. The rank 10 and 14 trinkets are comparable to the class specific trinkets found in Blackwing Lair, except that they also have different non use effects, not like the rank 2 trinkets. And they of course are also unique items. The effects will not be much better for will not be much better suited for PvP than for PvE, and the effects of each Rank trinket will will be different and will be useful for all specs of the class. Not counting bullshit like not counting dumb shit like 17, 17, 17 specs. Those aren't even real specs. The belts, cloaks, bracelets, necklaces, and trinkets are not part of any set of items. The rank 15 item can be chosen from the legendary option from the raid legendary option from the actual legendary option, so the legendaries you get from raids. So this means slow out when a melee sword, fast gun, etc. Yeah, from the legendary options that are for any, except the items will have the same types of success that exist on the rank 12 version, so in higher amounts, and the previous that exist on the, on the range of the will also exist on rank 15 items. Each class will get different rewards from a rank 15 quest, such that when they get the rewards, they'll, they'll get all the weapons and shields that their class will care about, so loot for all three or more specs is covered by the quest reward. 
The item level 63 Epic Weapon Quest will consist of doing some objects in the battlegrounds. A lot of times. Like making it intentionally be very grindy, grindy in order to be comparable to getting something like a rune blade of Baron Riven there. Or a black blade of Sharam. Or a Yusid as one. Or a Book of the Dead. The quest, re the quest reward will not actually be a weapon, but instead be a token that you can spend at a vendor on an item level 63 epic item in order to cut down on quest creation. Each one will cost one of these tokens and 40 of each mark of honor, and the selection of epic items will be limited to parallel selection of item level 63 epic items and shields that the game offers from non-PVP. Not excluding world bosses. Forgot that part. Said vendor, said vendor will also sell Bino Pick of Ilo 63 Epic Ammo at a base cost of 2 gold per stack, but it will require rank center higher to use. At rank 12, you may also buy Ilo 65 Epic Ammo at a base cost of 2.5 gold per stack. PvP ranks will, will have reputation requirements for the sake of thematics as follows. At rank 0, plus, uh, you must be friendly if you're racist faction, and neutral if you're out racist allied faction, so like. The Raven Tusk Trolls for the Horde, and the the Storm Pike Guard for the Alliance, for example. I had trouble thinking of one. Anyway, rank 3 and higher. You must be friendly with all of your factions, capital cities, and their battleground factions. A rank 6 and higher. You must be, faction, you must be honored with all of your factions, capital cities, and your battleground factions. At rank 11 plus, you must be revered of all of your factions, capital cities, and your battleground factions. At rank 14 and higher, you must be exalted of all of your, rank, your, your factions, capital cities, and your battleground factions. Being below your rank's minimum reputation if any of your own, for, if any of your own factions will result in any demotion. In section number 5.1, new PvP ranking system. All right, that's all I got for the uh, PvP reward changes, except for the other Battleground Vendor changes. You know, I'm going to include that in this video. And this honorable kill changes, not because I might as well die at that point. Battleground food will no longer have a reputation requirement to eat, and will otherwise be changed as follows. Level 10 Battleground food, which is new, will grant 552 health and aim to 35 mana over 24 seconds. Level 15 Battleground food, also new, will grant 874 health and 1344 mana over 27 seconds. Level 25 Battleground Food will grant 1392 hit points and 1992 mana over 30 seconds. Level 25 Battleground Food will grant 1248 hit points and 2934 mana over 30 seconds. And level 45 Battleground Food and Ultronic Mana Biscuits will grant 3180 hit points and 4200 mana over 30 seconds, while the Ultronic Mana Biscuits will be only usable in Ultronic Valley. A major. Now, moving on. A major flaw of the game without. Players that so often use expensive consumables in battlegrounds, which hyperbolically read its head in Classic Nothlet, that has been no classic in 2019, such as free action potions, goblins, tavern charges, limited invulnerability potions, iron grenades, though those in particular are not so expensive, flash bombs, all sorts of buff potions, magic dust, unconscious cigarettes, flasks, and thorium grenades. In order to solve this problem, I will do the opposite of what the I'll do the opposite of what Blizzard did of Arenas in the Burning Crusade. I'll add more Battleground-only items. To this extent, new Battleground vendors will sell non-binum pickup Battleground versions of very many consumable items for 5% of the vendor value of their non-Battleground counterparts before discounts that act as their non-Battleground counterparts and are only usable in Battlegrounds. These items shall include the following. Which has no reputation requirement to use. Have no reputation requirement to use. Type B world buffs. See uh, general buff slash debuff changes under section 11 other for more information when I get around to making that video. Or just so you document it yourself. So yeah, type B world buffs. They wear off early when the battleground ends. Bandages and anti-venoms. These will mirror the options that first aid has and have as many options as first aid has. All consumable products of alchemy include flasks and throwable alchemist only potions. See section 9 or 9.1 alchemy for information. But not the blood pills brought needed to use maturation potions. Buffs provided by these wear off early when the battleground ends, and the heals of mana slots of rejuvenation potions will not be weaker or stronger than their non PvP counterparts. All engineering consumables, mm -hmm. as well, will be available as battleground only items. Arcane mods will coincidentally be, under be less than 10 silver each before discounts. 
Sharpening stones and weight stones, including the elemental varieties. Shall be offered as battleground only items. They were off earlier than the battleground islands. There shall also be battleground only holy water, thistle tea, magic dust, and other consumables obtained from the world that are not covered above and can be obtained more than once per character, such as whipper room tubers, jungle remedies, dark and dark runes, but not really sticky glue or bag of marbles. These such items that are battleground that are sold by battleground vendors says battleground only items shall not include unconscious cigarettes. You may not buy those or battleground version of those from battleground vendors, and unconscious cigarettes in particular were changed are being changed to be unusable in battlegrounds. Less very, very many terrain exploits happen because of them. Obviously, all these consumables will share a cooldown of all their PvE parallels and whatever else and what they share a cooldown with. And all these battleground consumables will wear off early if you leave a battleground. And then we're in section 5.0.11, Dishonorable Kill Changes. Dishonorable Kill shall reduce the reputation of your faction and its allies and Ravenholds by 25 per kill at all non-negative PvP ranks in order to discourage a killing of quest NPCs on PvE servers. You ever hear of a war crime? And as stated elsewhere in the document, civilian NPCs will be immune to all AoE damage even while aggro. Alright, that's all I've got for the uh, section number 5 PvP. Next video will be on the new PvP ranking system. Thanks for watching.